All right, for today's pre-lecture video, um, I wanted to go over the force on a current carrying wire in a magnetic field. And then once we know that expression, we're gonna look at torque on a current carrying loop that's placed in a magnetic field. So in order to start looking at a current that's in a magnetic field, we'll remind ourselves of the force that a charge feels when it's moving in a magnetic field, simply because a charge that's moving is really what's happening when we have current. And so we know that that force on that charge is gonna be related to its drift velocity and the magnetic field. And so here we have a picture of a positive charge moving upward in a magnetic field. Remember that the X's indicate that the magnetic field is going into the page. This is a much simpler way to show three dimensions. And then if we do V cross V, we get a force acting on that charge to the left. Now, imagine that that charge is just one of many that's in a segment of wire that is L units long. So number of charges in that segment would be equal to the charge carrier density, N, which we saw in the previous, um, well, well, not just the previous chapter, but a little while back, and then times the volume of the piece of wire that we're looking at, which would be found by taking the cross-sectional area times the length. So that's how many charges we have. And so then we could say that the total force would be equal to multiplying those that number of charges times the charge on an individual charge carrier. And so now if we remember the expression for current is equal to the N A and the Q and the drift velocity and so we can take those terms out of it, and we have I L cross B. Now, the problem then becomes what of these terms do we associate a vector um, nature to because we want to do a cross product. There's still going to be a cross product that gives us the total force. And we've already decided... And it, of course, it's not just an arbitrary decision. It makes total sense that current isn't really a vector. Current is just a quantity. And so we're going to assign the vector nature to the length of the portion of current carrying wire that we're looking at. Of course, the direction for L will come from the direction of the current flow. And so we get the force on a current carrying wire or conductor is equal to I L cross B. And so that's how we get that expression. We, of course, use the right hand rule to determine the direction of the force. And again, remember that the direction of L, the vector, is going to be in the direction that the current is flowing in. And here is a picture showing, in a less elegant way, uh, three dimensions where we have a current carrying wire in a magnetic field that's in the x direction. And because the current um, is in the xz plane and the magnetic field is in the x direction, our force has to be perpendicular to both those vectors, which would have to be in the y direction, which is also found by using the right hand rule. Now that we have that expression, we can talk about the torque on a current carrying loop. Remember that torque is going to be caused when we have forces that tend to cause a rotation. So we're going to talk about our loop and we're going to say that the direction of the current 
is going to be in this loop in the counterclockwise direction. We're going to say that this loop has a width of W and a length of L. And of course, we're just going to say the current has a magnitude of I. And so now we're going to use the idea of F equals I L cross B to look at all four sides of the loop. Of course, the first thing that we need to do is I need to determine what the direction of the magnetic field is that this loop is sitting in. And for this first example, I'm going to say that this loop has a magnetic field that's coming out of the plane of this page. And remember, this is how I can represent that magnetic field. And so now I'm going to look at the force on each side of the wire to determine what the direction of the force would be. And of course, we could also find out what the magnitude is. So first I'm going to look at the right hand side. And if I do um, the right hand side of the loop, the vertical portion where the current's traveling up, if I do the IL cross B, I'm going to find a force that's going to be to the right. And now I'm going to do the same thing on the left hand side and I find that my force is going to be to the left. Now both of these forces, the blue forces, we're going to just keep them, are going to have a magnitude of I L B. So that's the magnitude of those two forces. Now I'm going to look at the forces on the top and the bottom. And so on the top, I'm going to use the right hand rule. And if I do I cross I L cross B, I'm going to get a force up. And then if I do the same thing on the bottom, use my right hand rule, I get a force that's down. And we'll just keep those as my red forces. And the magnitude of those is going to be IWB, just because we've said that the rect it's a rectangle and it has different dimensions in the length and the width. The thing about this is that these forces They cancel and they don't cause the torque. And that's something that we want to remember, and it's going to end up making sense when we have our final expression that the forces, when you have a current carrying loop in a magnetic field where the magnetic field is um, in this direction would be passing right through the area of the loop so that it would be, in this case, parallel to the area vector of this loop, you don't get a torque. So let's look at another example. I'm going to do the same direction on my current. but this time I'm going to have a different direction for my magnetic field. I'm going to have it perpendicular to the plane of the loop and it's just going to the white, to the right. And so, oh, and I want to make sure I just remember it has a width and a length. L. And F is equal to I L cross B. All right, so if I do the top again, and if I do the current cross with the magnetic field, look at the top and the bottom. The current is either parallel or anti-parallel to the magnetic field, so there is going to be no force. So if I talk about the magnitude of the top and bottom, those forces are zero. Alright, so then I'm going to look at the sides. And when I look at the sides, 
if I do the right hand side and I do I cross B, um, notice I'm going to get a force into the page, so I'm going to represent it like this. And when I do the right hand side, I mean the left hand side, sorry about that, I'm going to get a force out of the page. And the magnitude of those forces is going to be ILB because of the fact that um, the, the wire, the current carrying wire, the direction of the current carrying wire and the magnetic field are strictly perpendicular to each other. And these forces will cause a torque. So the total torque will be equal to W times I times L times B because the axis is going to be down through the center and the distance for each of the forces is going to be W over 2 that they're going to add up. And so you'll get W over 2 ILB plus W over 2 ILB for the torque caused by each of the forces on the right hand side and the left hand side. So that's something to remember now too. Really, we're going to look at the thing that's going to be the most sort of general and that's when now we did very specific orientations of the magnetic field and the current carrying loop. And now we're going to have them be at an angle to each other. So for instance, if I looked at this from the side, if this was my length and this was my width, and to be consistent with the picture, my, my, uh, my current's going clockwise in this particular example. And then my, magnet, my magnetic field is going to be like sort of at an angle coming out of the coming out of the plane of the wire. It's hard to show. And this is why this is actually nice. This is like a top view. And so what's going to happen here is um, the top and bottom forces are not going to cause any sort of torque. It's only going to be the forces on the sides. So the forces on the sides are going to be I, L, B times, um, and they're actually going to be perpendicular. To each other and then the torque caused by those forces is of course R cross F which is going to be R F sine of theta that's the definition and R radius for each of the forces is going to be W over 2 I L B sine of theta for each force And so when you have both forces, it's going to be W over 2 I L B sine of theta times 2, which will just be W I L B sine of theta. And so if we continue with that, our torque total the magnitude was W L I A B sorry I B sine of theta but W times L is just the area of the loop and the magnitude of the torque is going to be I A B sine of theta and what happens is we're going to assign the vector to the area.
and the area is going to be defined in a specific way. The plane of the loop is an area, the area is going to be perpendicular, and um, so when we talk about the expression for torque, it's I A cross B, but we're going to talk about this. This is going to be something we call the magnetic moment. Let's take a look at how that's defined. So the magnetic moment, mu, is equal to I times A, where it gets its vector no notion from the area. And the way that we define the area vector, the direction, which is going to be perpendicular to the plane of the loop, we curl our fingers in the direction of the current flow. And the way that our, finger, our thumb points, then, is in the direction of the area. And this allows us to define the torque on the loop in terms of that magnetic moment, and we can define it also as mu cross B.